Welcome guys to another episode of Scary Mysteries. Today's video has two controversial layers to each story and we dug deep to find ones that you probably never heard of. The first layer, we have student teacher affairs, which is always scandalous. And the second, we're dealing with some tragic consequences that were a direct result of these indiscretions. But before we start, if you like our channel and the content we put out, then please subscribe and hit the notifications so you can be alerted when our next video drops. We're putting out three videos a week for you guys to enjoy, so thanks for tuning in. And now on to the video. Five student teacher affairs with tragic endings. Number five, Isaac Infante and Felicia Barahona. Felicia Barahona wasn't perfect. She committed a crime that got her shunned by her community but whatever her transgressions, this former teacher certainly didn't deserve what happened to her afterwards. Barahona was 32 years old when she taught at the DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx in New York as a science teacher. And then, just like that, her name made it to the national headlines when she was caught having a sexual relationship with a high school student named Isaac Infante. The latter was just 17 or 18 when he got involved in the scandal. Their illicit relationship ended up with Barahona being terminated from the school and her teaching certificate being revoked. However, it seemed like the bond between them was so strong that the two reportedly continued to be in contact. Soon, they were found out to be living together. She eventually got pregnant and had a son and this was when things began to get complicated between the two lovers. They were always arguing, and the man's alcohol problem just made it worse. Barahona and Infante soon parted ways, and the woman got the right to raise their child while he paid child support. Everyone involved seemed to be moving on with their lives, but then a tragedy occurred. On December 22, 2016, the ex-teacher and the former student were engaged in a heated verbal dispute at the woman's apartment at West 153rd Street. Things escalated quickly, and the court records indicated that Infante wrapped an electrical cord around Barahona's neck. He then squeezed the cord so tightly that he choked her to death. The couple's son, Miguel, happened to witness his father strangling his mother. The four-year-old cried in the corner of the bathroom when the killer took another cable. The same as what he did with the first victim, he tied the cord around his son's neck and suffocated the boy. The strangler then fled to Pennsylvania where he celebrated Christmas with his family and he remained there until the bodies of the mother and child were discovered just days later. Upon hearing the news, the suspect returned to New York and went to the police, where he pretended to be stricken with grief over the incident. NYPD detectives, however, were too quick to see the holes in his story, and he was immediately arrested. Infante, now 24 years old, was sentenced to 25 years to life in jail for strangling his ex-girlfriend and his own son to death. Barahona's transgression cannot be denied, however, she certainly didn't deserve to die for it, especially not from a man who also took the life of a pure and innocent young boy. Number four, Chen Ming Feng and Teacher Chang. A breakup in a relationship is already hard, yet it becomes even more complicated when one party refuses to accept that the affair is in fact over. Chen Ming Feng is far from being considered to be a minor, as she was already 27 years old and a graduate student at the National Taiwan University Department of Sports. It was in this institution where he met a female teacher and a resident counselor known only by the name Chen. In 2013, Chen began visiting her office, asking for help and dealing with his emotional issues. Shortly after, Chang and Chen became romantically involved. 
They arrived at the point wherein they addressed each other as husband and wife. They had been sexually involved, although the man initially blamed his partner for forcing herself on him. Yet, a subsequent investigation revealed that Chen had sent messages expressing his sexual desires for the woman. It was also found out that the student took financial assistance from his teacher. He reportedly received around 675 US dollars on a monthly basis, which he used to pay rent and other living expenses. Things went sour between the two when Chen began to date another woman. Because of this, he proposed to end his relationship with Cheng, to which the latter sternly refused. She apparently threatened him that she would reveal his financial dependence on her, and the threats didn't bode well to Chen. In February of 2017, he went to visit Cheng at her home. He once again told her that he wanted to end the relationship, and the woman remained firm in her decision, and this resulted in the two fighting. What started as a verbal outburst soon escalated into a physical altercation. The court records indicated that Chen hit Cheng over the head with a baseball bat, and he then strangled her to death. The killer then took all her money from the victim's wallet before leaving her place. Chen Ming Feng, who happens to be the son of Chen Weicheng, a former Chinese Taipei national baseball team coach, was eventually arrested. He was later on sentenced to life in prison and deprivation of civil rights for the murder of Teacher Chen. Considering the extent of violence he did against his former lover, there is a possibility that the sentence could be further increased. Number three, William Flynn and Pamela Smart. Grown-ups are supposed to guide the young children on to the right path in life. However, some adults are just too absorbed in themselves that they would be willing to exploit children just to further their own plans. Pamela Smart was at the height of her career as a media coordinator at Winnicunnet High School in Hampton, New Hampshire. She had just gotten married to her boyfriend of two years, Gregory Smart, just seven months into that marriage, the two began to realize that they were at odds with one another. They started having difficulties in their relationship, and eventually the 22-year-old found interest in a high school sophomore named William Flynn. Known to friends as Billy, the young boy was a volunteer at an after-school program that Mrs. Smart ran. The two hit it off, but soon the woman began to seduce the young boy. Flynn fell, hook, line, and sinker, and he was so obsessed with the young woman that he would do anything for her. His devotion was soon put to the test when Smart threatened the 15-year-old that she would break up with him if he didn't do this one thing, kill her husband. He didn't need any convincing and eager to stay on Pam's good side, the infatuated Flynn brought along his 17-year-old friend, Patrick Randall, and two others to the Smarts condominium in Derry, New Hampshire. The group forced their way inside and found Mr. Smart, whom they ordered to get down on his knees in the foyer. Randall restrained him and held a knife to his throat while Flynn fired a hollow point bullet into the homeowner's head. On that same day, Smart came home from a meeting at work and there she found her husband, murdered and immediately called the police. Investigators initially believed this to be a disrupted burglary, judging from how the crime scene looked. But diving deeper into the case, authorities found what was believed to be the weapon used in the murder. Then came May 14th, when they received an anonymous tip saying that one of the Flynn's friends, Cecilia Pierce, was actually aware of the plan. At the behest of the police, the girl agreed to wear a wire in hopes that they could get some incriminating statements from Smart, which they did. On August 1st, 1990, the Rockingham County Police arrested and charged Smart with first-degree murder. The Smart's murder trial gained considerable media attention, 
owing to the fact that it was one of the first in the U.S. to allow TV cameras in the courtroom. Though the accused admitted to having an affair with someone underage, she denied any involvement in the killing of her husband. After a month of legal proceedings, the court found Smart guilty of conspiracy to commit murder in which she received life in prison without the possibility of parole. Flynn and the others had served prison sentences as well, but have already been released on parole. Meanwhile, Smart remains in prison to this day. She's appealed several times for a pardon, but every time they've been denied. Upon reviewing her case and conviction, authorities believed her to be a cold-blooded mastermind who controlled and took advantage of the vulnerability of her underage sex partner. She did so in order to pursue her plans of eliminating her husband while having Flynn and the others take the fall. Number two, Samuel Valdivia and Tamara Hoffman. Relationships, everything from torrid affairs to complex love triangles can get very complicated. So much so that some couples find themselves in a position wherein they would let their emotions get the better of them and sad to say, most of these cases end up quite bloody. Jason Rusher had always known that his wife, Tamara Hoffman, was having improper relationships with her students. In 2006, the secondary math teacher was apprehended by police when she was found together in a car with her student, Sixto Balbuena. The controversy prompted her to resign from her teaching post at Marcus de Niza High School in Tempe, Arizona sometime in 2007. But Hoffman didn't stop from engaging in other illicit relationships with minors. This ultimately drove Rusher to file for divorce in 2008. Fast forward to 2009, and the woman was now teaching at El Dorado High School in Chandler, Arizona. The 48-year-old educator was now engaged with Balbuena who was 20 years old and a Navy sailor. In April of that same year, Balbuena was on leave from work. He went straight to his fiance's house when the latter failed to pick up his call. And upon entering the house, he heard noises upstairs. Fearing for Hoffman's safety, the off-duty Navy personnel grabbed a knife and went upstairs. It was at this point that he saw Samuel Valdivia starting to the bathroom to hide. Valdivia was a senior at El Dorado High School. An 18-year-old reportedly was having an affair with Hoffman. Court documents indicated that Balbuena forced the bathroom door to open, and once he did, he found the younger guy with the homeowner, who was also naked. He began to punch and kick the teen. Balbuena told police he didn't really mean to kill Valdivia, but wrath must have blinded him. The knife that he had been holding went straight through the young man's stomach. Realizing what he'd done, he called 911 and waited for the police to arrive. Valdivia was pronounced dead upon arrival at a local hospital. For this, Balbuena was given 22 years in jail after he was found guilty of second degree murder in 2010. Hoffman, meanwhile, voluntarily surrendered her teaching certificate to the Arizona Board of Education. Nothing good ever comes out if you mix love, lust, and jealousy. It's driven people to do the unthinkable, and if it can happen to them, then it can happen to any of us. Number one, Sean Powell and Aaron McLean. Eric McLean was so dedicated to his wife, Erin, that he set aside his plans for career development and worked several odd jobs just to put her through her postgraduate education. She and their two children were everything for McLean. However, their marriage was far from perfect. It was revealed that Mrs. McLean was kind of a wild woman whose preferred sexual lifestyle was deemed inappropriate at least at that time, societal standards. 
Records indicate that Aaron had been carrying on what was considered to be a fairly public affair with Sean Powell, an 18-year-old student at West High School in Knoxville, Tennessee, where she was also employed as an English teacher. What Mr. McLean thought to be an extra mile effort from his wife to help the troubled young man turned out to be an affair wherein the two would spend long hours talking to one another. His suspicions were confirmed when the woman herself admitted their relationship. Fearing an impending divorce, the husband swallowed his pride and decided to put up with the unusual situation. And as a result, he became so depressed that he had to seek professional help. Meanwhile, his wife's relationship with the youngster continued. Then it began to affect their children. She started to neglect her responsibilities to their kids. It became worse when one of their children caught their mother and her lover kissing and doing stuff. This was aside from the fact that their relatives and friends were fully aware of the woman's infidelity. Then came the final straw. In March of 2007, Eric finally confronted the young man whom he caught having sex with Erin in his own bed at their house on Coker Ave in Knoxville. He pointed a gun at the teen and led him outside of their property. His plan was to only scare him, but things didn't go as planned. Instead of being frightened, Powell mocked him and tried to pull the weapon away. That's when the rifle went off, shooting the youngster right through the head. Eric was initially charged with first-degree murder, but the jury convicted him of reckless manslaughter, which is a far lesser charge. One juror later explained that she found the situation so pathetic, wherein the woman didn't even try to keep the affair a secret. The victim had a part to play as well, as he seemed to keep on taunting a man that was obviously troubled by their wrongdoings. The public believed that Mr. McLean was the only redeeming character in this tumultuous three-way affair. He was a man willing to pretend that his wife still loved him, but sometimes there's only so much nonsense that a man can put up with. So that's it for today's video. If you ever want to listen to our videos in podcast form, we post all of them on our Scary Mysteries podcast. You can also check out our other podcast called Every Town. Or watch those here every Friday. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.